Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is Matt. And this is an impromptu bonus episode because we got the news yesterday slash this morning that the Natsu Basho has officially been canceled. Uh, so it came out Sunday morning, our time, that the Kyokai was preparing to cancel the Natsu Basho. And then the final announcement was made sometime Monday night, Japan time, Sunday night, our time. It was very, um, that bureaucracy episode of Futurama feeling. <laughs> <laughs> like, that for 24 hours, they were filling out the forms to begin preparing to start planning on canceling maybe later. Yeah, and, exactly. And then, like, 24 <laughs> hours later, we finally get some, some like, concrete news. Yeah. A, a nice, small announcement that we have. My voice quality should sound a lot better than it has in the past because... Eh, some of the- I don't know about that. Well, the sound quality, at least, not because a couple of us have received some new recording equipment. Uh, So hopefully I sound quite a bit better than I have on the previous episodes. Mac is still a little bit lagging behind, but once he gets all the proper equipment from Jake's house, he will be right there with us. Yes, I don't I don't want to uh, violate the uh, social distancing that that is uh, currently in place still. Yeah, yeah, I want you to drive down my street at about, I don't know, twenty twenty five, and I'll just like hurl this bag of stuff no! in through your open window. And then when you get home, you need to burn your car down. I, 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 okay. <laughs> now, before we get into the nitty gritty details of what this cancellation means, uh, I was very moved by this cancellation uh, because this is very depressing. I am uh, I am without sports, and this is the <laughs> last thing that was remaining. I I was so moved that I came up with a completely original poem that I did not uh, steal from a pre existing format whatsoever. So, I, are you going to um, subject us to this poem? I I am, and here it goes. First they came for the NBA, and I did not speak out because I was not a basketball player. Then they came for the NCAA tournament, and I did not speak out because I was not a college athlete. Then they came for the MLB, and I did not speak out because I was not a baseball fan. Then they came for sumo, and there was no one left to speak for the sumo fans. Touching. Quite gripping and moving, I know. Um... (laughs) Thank you, Mac. Every, we'll give everybody a moment to dry their tears and collect themselves. Um, yeah, so... I think the subject matter of the original is a little bit more serious. <laughs> original? Well, I, I don't follow. I quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. So, yes, the May tournament, which had previously been delayed by two weeks, is now completely canceled. And in addition to that, the July Basho which may or may not be held at this point. I, I I don't think we can say one way or another whether that is going to happen. But if it is held, it will not be in Nagoya as it traditionally is. It will be held in Tokyo, and it will be, again, with no fans in attendance, as they do not want to have to move the rickshi and their heyas from one city to another just to expose a completely different populace to their germ biomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and all the hotels and stuff that they would have to set up or you know it, all it's, the transportation it's also... exactly in addition to that so the spring jungio tour which would typically be happening right now had been canceled they have gone ahead and canceled the autumn jungio tour as well and that either i can't remember if that typically leads up to the akiba show or if that is right after the Aki Basho. I but thought either... it was after Aki. Yeah, it, it happens in October uh, yeah. usually. Okay, but they have gone ahead and canceled that as well. Um, so there are a few factors that led to this decision. Uh, a couple of factors. So one is that Japan has extended their state of emergency to May 31st, which as I understand it is basically a stay-at-home order. Uh much like many states in the United States have in place, not Iowa. Uh, We're reopening. Oh Oh, yeah. We must 
we must be decreasing in new cases every day. Good for us. Oh, no. Not even a little. (laughs) (laughs) And then another huge factor that had to weigh on the decision makers minds was that we have had Rick Shee and members of the JSA test positive for COVID-19. Sorry about my dog. She is very upset about the cancellation of the Basho as well. Oh, she's she, howling I can just like hear this. her. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a day now, and she's still going. Yes. So hopefully, my <laughs> wife will wrangle her very soon, as she knows we are recording. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned, there were a couple of Rikshi that tested positive. Uh, do we just want to edit around this and wait for her to shut the frick up? No, do <laughs> no, it live. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the amount that it bothers you makes it worth it for me. Yes. <laughs> I just can't imagine that it's good podcasting etiquette. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what does she see? Like a squirrel? Uh, it very well could be nothing. It, if that's she's true. anything, Dogs just bark at nothing. <laughs> if she's anything like Bubbles, and I know she is in a lot of ways, she just kind of goes off sometimes. Yeah, but Bubbles is so pretty. Not that Pepper right. isn't, but Bubbles is so pretty. Fix oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Bubbles is definitely the prettiest. All right, so I'm just going to start over. And however you edit this is fine with me. You can leave it all <laughs> in. I don't care. <laughs> edit. You're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying, the other reason is that some Rikshi and members of the JSA tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, their first Rikshi tested positive and was hospitalized. That was announced on April 10th. Uh, he is still hospitalized from just a couple of days ago is the latest news we heard on that, uh, but is improving improving per Shibatayama Oyakata. Uh, we don't know which Rikshi it is or which stable he is from. We're only getting information for Sekitori and Oyakata that are affected by COVID-19. Everything else will remain anonymous. Very and, possible that it's because, well, I mean, for one, like, you know, that's confidential medical information. So, like, they don't have to release it if they don't want to right. themselves. But also, it's very possible there are plenty of minors involved here that could be, you know, that could be the person in question. And that whole extra layer of confidentiality there yep. for good reason. Mm-hmm. And then a few weeks after the unknown Rikshi tested positive, they were six members of the Japan Sumo Association that were hospitalized and tested positive for COVID-19 from the Takadagawa stable. Mm -hmm. And we know about them because it includes Takadagawa Oyakata himself. Uh, It includes Jurio 6 Rikshi Hakuyozan and then four non-Sekitori Rikshi that are unidentified at this time. All of those have been released from the hospital with uh, negative test results at this point. So as we actually kind of talked about leading up to the ghost Haru, Hatsu, no, Haru Basho, still mix those up after almost four years. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is going to be the first canceled Basho in nine years since March of 2011. And it looks like only the fourth overall after the May 1946 Basho was closed for repairs to the Kokugikan following World War II. And in January 1932, after the Shunjuen incident, which we talked about, I believe, on the Haru preview. So if you want more details on that, you can check out that podcast. And I did see it confirmed that the Bonske that was made for the Natsu Basho will be used for the next Basho that occurs, regardless of when that Basho occurs. So the current Bonske then would either be good for a future freak show Nagoya, who is not in Nagoya and in fact will be in Tokyo, or it will be for possibly Aki. Or Kyushu or Hatsu, whenever they decide to start up Sumo again. Hopefully... Hatsu the 2025. Nagoya, Nagoya. <laughs> Hatsu 2025. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that one isn't like referred to as like, you know, the time of year that it is. It's referred to by the city that it takes place in. Is there even another name for the Nagoya Basho? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Nagoya Basho. It's July Nagoya. Basho. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so from here on out, we will refer to it as non-Nagoya Nagoya. So, that just sounds so weird. <laughs> what about non-Goya? Ah, uh, oh. There's, there's the winner right there. Non-Goya. <laughs> Non-Goya. All right. You heard it here first, folks. 
So there is going to be an effect on Sumo and JSA as all other sports are feeling the effects of COVID-19 and not holding any events with spectators. Um, But it sounds like Sumo is getting a little bit less of an impact. Uh, There was an article from the Japan Times written by John Gunning called Sumo Feels Impact of COVID-19 but Escapes Major Financial Hit Plaguing Other Sports end title Um, that's a long title (laughs) yeah so they'll obviously be taking a financial hit and some of the details about that got from at sumo follower on twitter so apparently the income from one basho is one and a half billion yen uh, and 500 million of that comes from a tv broadcast so since the last basho was held without fans but was still on tv that ended up as a one billion yen loss because they only got the 500 million from the TV broadcast. And so canceling this Natsu Basho is a loss of one and a half billion yen for hey. JSA. But they still have to pay all of the Sekitori, Oyakata, Gyoji at this time. And at least the approximate cost of paying for the Sekitori for a Basho cycle is 193.2 million yen. Let me do the math on that. They still got to be paying these guys. Divide it a bit. Divide it by a hundred. Yep. So yeah, it's about it's almost two million US dollars, if that makes any more context sense. Yeah. This isn't as bad as other sports because like we said, they were able to hold that March tournament. They still got money from the TV, but also their low level of merchandise that is typically available at the tournaments actually is kind of helping them because they don't rely on that income as much as other sports, such as like baseball or soccer uh, to stay afloat. So since they don't normally rely on that income, missing that small amount of income isn't going to hurt them as much as those other sports. I Uh, thought that's kind of interesting too, because like in most major American sports, the, um, the players unions negotiate somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of revenue for the players. Right. mm Mm-hmm. So here Something we're like talking, that. yeah, we're talking about 200 million compared to 1.5 billion. So that's that's barely over 10 percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but all of these factors will only help Sumo in the short term, because if this extends too much further out, the JSA, just like any other sports organization in Japan or the world, uh, will face very difficult financial circumstances and potential bankruptcy so hopefully they're able to this isn't going to affect them that much for all of our sakes other things that are affected by this the yokozuna deliberation council open practice session that usually takes place before each tokyo basho has been canceled for this one obviously uh new recruitment examinations uh that usually take place at the end of april were tentatively rescheduled for may 12th uh, and are now canceled. The practice sessions at the Hayas are still going ahead, but the Japan Sumo Association is urging stable masters to limit the contact to a level that they judge appropriate. Uh, training is close to visitors, and media interaction is only taking place remotely. Uh, there was also something released by Shibata. Shibatayama Oyakata earlier today for further instructions for Oyakata to prevent uh, any infection in their heya. Uh, so anybody who has mild symptoms is to be excused from Keiko. And once the symptoms are gone for two days, they may resume Keiko or practice. Uh, if possible, they want to ventilate the Keiko area by leaving windows open at all times. Uh, in big heya, they want people to wear masks at all times, and they want Rikshi to, if possible, eat separately from separate dishes and avoid conversation during meals. They are also supposed to wear masks while doing their exercise, uh, and each individual needs to write his name on his mask and then remove it and put it in a Ziploc bag and be the only one to use that mask. They must have some kind of an athletic style mask that wraps around the head because when these guys are doing butsukari and they're doing all their hitting drills and their tumbles and their rolls, your standard elastic mask isn't going to stay in place. (laughs) This all just strikes me as like uh, PR. 
Like a lot of those, a lot of those things are things that they can maybe do to make it sound like they're taking actions of some sort. But I can't imagine that a lot of them are going to have a huge impact. It, it's better than nothing. And I mean, a lot of these yeah. guys, they they live at the stables. It's not like they have anywhere else to go to further separate. So, I mean, they're doing what they can given the cert- situation. Uh, so I, I don't think it's just PR stuff. I think they are taking the steps that they need to to prevent this as much as possible. Picture, I- if you will, every single Rikshi participating with a Hannibal Lecter mask. The eyes are completely fine, just a mask over the face, and it just wraps around the skull. Like, how intimidating would that be? Intimidating, but that has, like, specifically the part cut out that you need covered. <laughs> well, no, then you'd put, like, an actual mask on the inside of that. Yeah, maybe maybe a different type of mask, but I get your idea here. <laughs> and I'm not saying that, like, taking taking any sort of action is wrong or anything like that. I'm just trying to picture, like, how, how you could actually... Uh, uh, avoid spreading like if, if somebody in a Haya has a, a, a virus that's this contagious I, you know there there can't be a whole lot of things that'll stop it from getting to a lot of other people in that Haya that I don't know that that part's kind of scary to me but I definitely agree with that it, it's better than nothing but obviously it's not going to stop it from yeah, spreading no. inside it, the Haya if somebody has it yeah I mean it's better than nothing in the same way that like me giving a dollar to a homeless guy is better than nothing you know like it, it's objectively going to help that person but like is it going to help enough to make a large difference hold it did we hear a cleric oh shit hey hi yo i did not know you were record oh it should have been obvious now that i look at it how's it going <laughs> <laughs> that looks like cleric has joined us now we are just talking about the cancellation of the natsu basho cleric let's just start Sounds over good and like <laughs> just bring him in on everything we've said so far Cool. Yeah. How far, far are you guys in? <laughs> <laughs> and now that Flarek has joined us and we are a full team again, let's talk about whether or not it was the right decision to cancel the Natsu Basho. Uh, Tachi I ran a poll on their blog before this decision was announced asking fans, should Natsu be canceled? And the results were 50.2% no, 28.6% yes. And then 21.2% yes, and Nagoya should be canceled too. So basically amounted to a 50-50 split. So it sounds like there's a pretty even split among people thinking that this should be canceled or not. Let's find out if there's a 50-50 split on this podcast with whether or not to should have been canceled. All right, everybody speak up if you are upset and you think the JSA did the wrong thing by canceling the Natsu Basho. Good. You're all good people, and we can continue to podcast <laughs> together. <laughs> say, do, do, does anybody have a you know counterpoint? <laughs> so let's let's bring Flarek in on this, so he can get a little bit of talking time on this episode. What what are your thoughts and opinions on the decision to cancel the Natsu Basho, Flarek? Uh, I guess my thoughts are it was the right idea. Uh, they declared a state of emergency in Japan, and it sounds like it's kind of just they're kind of on the kind of going up and up in Japan from the little I have heard. So I think the decision to cancel was right for the occasion at that time. So I, that's most of my opinion about that. Uh, talking about the next one of the, of Nagoya, whether or not that should be canceled or be, I guess have another ghost boss show. I think the plan for a ghost boss show starting out and then kind of being tentative, ready to cancel it, I think is probably the way to go in my opinion. And did you hear the news that that is going to be taking place in Tokyo? And as Jake has dubbed it, it will be the non Goya Basho. <laughs> I like it. Oh, would they actually change the name? That would be fantastic. <laughs> See, that's what we were trying to figure out. We don't know what's the, there's no other name for the Nagoya Basho. So if it's not held in Nagoya, what do you call it? Nago Home <sighs> Basho. Mine was better. Tokyo Basho. Yeah, shut up, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Kanto? Yeah. Uh that I I do I think I did hear that and it makes a lot of sense because I think they have like at least some stake of ownership in the Tokyo one. So if they have to cancel, it probably is not as a fin- big of a financial impact on the GSA. So I like that a lot. Yeah, and I had also heard that they had delayed the Nagoya Basho before all this cancellation business and they hadn't even checked with the arena in Nagoya to see if like the dates would work 
for moving the Basho back two weeks. It's pretty easy when it's a Kokuki Con because, yeah, that's that's pretty much theirs for the most part. But <laughs> there could have been like concerts or something planned for that time. <laughs> Not that there's concerts nowadays, anyways. But I said, let me check my schedule. Uh, nope, all of our acts have canceled. I think we're good. <laughs> This may be a discussion for another time, but like, what do you think Sumo would be like if you didn't have to be a wrestler to be a decision maker? Better? Ooh. Like, what if, what if we like hired professional bureaucratic experts to like help with all the administrative duties and things like that? And I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. It would be a lot more geared towards making a profit, I I would think. Yeah. Less towards the actual culture of Sumo. That's a good point. What once I said better and I thought about it, like it might be like advertised better, and there might be some things on that front that would be better, and maybe the look and feel of it could be a little bit better. But I think preserving the culture and most of the traditions of sumo is something that should be strived for. There's some traditions I think we would all like to see changed, but I think having it all be run by Rikshi, it it's risky, but I think that's the best way to preserve the culture and the traditions of sumo, which is 75% of sumo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be good and bad, I'm sure. But yeah, it would definitely be different. Yeah. But definitely different. a conversation for another day. Yeah. Uh, we could probably fill an hour on that one. Oh, totally. <laughs> Jake or Mac, any more new thoughts on canceling the Natsu Basho? Or are we all pretty much in lockstep there? Nope, I think we're good. It's a smart yeah, decision. Good. We can wait for sports. So that that leaves us at a tough situation because we like to podcast about sumo. Uh, we like to do it for the tournaments, and we like to do it six times a year. And they're trying to take away our opportunity to podcast about sumo six times a year. Our livelihood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they can take podcasting about sumo from our cold dead fingers because gosh darn it we're gonna simulate a goddamn basho and make this happen people that's right gosh darn followed by the goddamn (laughs) you gotta build to it you gotta build to it hype it's hype jake it's hype you gotta crescendo your uh your obscenities i was so good at hyping others that i hyped myself mid-sentence and hyped myself (laughs) into a dream if you will (laughs) Oh, Lord. So, yes, we have come up with a system where we will simulate all 15 days of the Basho. We are going to be coming up with our own Torikumi, and we've come up with a mathematical system to simulate every single match on the Torikumi for a potential of 315 matches. Jake, tell them how we're doing this a little bit. Well, the short version, and trust me, there will be a long version later. But the short version is we're going to take into account historical data um, as well as current uh, current momentum in the form of our uh, ELO based power rankings that we that we often run for our uh, for regular tournaments. So we take that that momentum ranking, that power ranking, and we combine that with head to head history between whichever two wrestlers we are simulating the match for. Basically, we're putting in a handful of different data points and the spreadsheets are going to print out a percentage, uh, a win percentage for one wrestler. And then we are going to roll some dice to see which uh, which wrestler wins based on that percentage, because there's nothing in the world fairer than rolling dice. And that fate decide. We don't we don't have enough uh, uh, D&D in our lives. You know, we got to get our dice in elsewhere. But mm. So we're we're doing this. We're basically running a single simulation. Uh, I mean, we're testing it and stuff uh, beforehand. But what we wanted to go away from was in a lot of like sports competition simulation things. You you run a bajillion different simulations, right? Because you wanna uh, you wanna take as much. Um, I, I guess you wanna take the chance out of it and really try and nail down what your model is predicting. But in this case, we we can't really do that because if somebody has a 53% chance to beat this one other guy, and then you run 10,000 simulations, yeah, you just find out that they have a 53% chance to beat that guy. Or you could have a Tokushoryu case. Well, you can't have a Tokushoryu case if you are running a bunch of simulations. But the way that we're doing it, um, day-to-day, we'll, we'll determine the matchups, we'll, determine, we'll, we'll look up what their head-to-head is, 
their head to head history and we combine these into 1%. So like, you know, if it's Hakuho versus somebody at the bottom, you know, he's got a 90% chance to win or something. We will roll dice. And if it's below 90, then Hakuho wins. Or so it, it leaves the opportunity for an upset. It's very unlikely, but like we still could have a Tokushoryu type situation where somebody who is the underdog in all their matches still manages to win the most. But we will find out whether or not that happens. Where we got um, a whole bunch of different factors going into this. Like I said, we have our momentum uh, rankings, we have our ELO, uh, we have our head to head history between whichever two wrestlers are going against each other, and we're also taking into account injuries. Injuries is one that we've debated a couple different ways, but uh, the what we're what we're settling for is basically after every single match we roll to see if the loser was injured by it. Uh, historically, over the last five years, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of one percent of the time. So, uh, if we have, like Ryan said, three hundred and fifteen matches in a full tournament, that gives you roughly like three people going Kujo. Uh, in a in a given tournament, which lines up pretty well with with the history, so we're uh, we we've got a couple different methods of that that we've tested out. But long story short, uh, the math tells us what the dice have to be for a certain guy to win, and we roll the dice to see if it happens or not. We're also going to uh, simulate, or not really simulate, I guess, but uh, roll on another table to see what the kimurite is based on uh, the history of the two wrestlers involved in the match. So there's there's quite a bit of technical stuff that goes into it. And like Jake said, we're going to dive more into that in a future podcast. Uh, but what does this all mean for the people that are listening to this? What are you going to be getting out of this? And so basically what we're going to be doing, we're going to be treating this as if the Basho is 100% happening. Pretty much it's going to be like the tournament is taking place behind closed doors and Grand Sumo Breakdown are the only people with eyes inside of the arena seeing what's going on. So a week before the tournament, we're going to have our bold predictions thread on Twitter. We're going to have you provide us with your champs and chumps predictions for our prediction series. And then a couple of days before the tournament as it would in a regular tournament, we're going to release days one and two of our Tori Kumi. And then starting on May 24th, the day that Natsu would have begun this year. So we're going to stick with their two-week delay, mostly give us more time to work out the kinks on the Basho simulator. We are going to be releasing a Tori Kumi in the morning, and then later on in the day, we are going to re release the match results for that day. And so we're going to do that for every single day for 15 days, releasing the Tori Kumi, and then releasing the match results. So you can follow along, see how your favorites are doing in our simulator every single day uh, we're going to be doing stuff on twitter like oh can you believe that hakaho slapped the piss out of endo again and knocked him unconscious we're yes, gonna do yes fun <laughs> we're gonna do fun things like that where we want you guys to kind of uh take our lead grab a hold and act like you've seen these matches as well and just elaborate on what happened in these matches we want it to be as interactive as possible we want to give people something to do in the time that they would be watching sumo talk about the fake sumo that we're going to be providing you uh we're going to have our preview episode for the basho as we typically would do Probably about half of that's going to be going into the nuts and bolts of how the simulator works. and But we're also going to talk about our prediction for what's going to happen, probably as if it's actually going to happen. Um, we're still going to do our prediction series with a winner and a loser with a punishment, as we always do. Uh, probably a big difference we're going to do, we're, pro we're planning on doing two midway episodes, so we're going to go over the Basho in five day chunks uh just to catch some of the people up that might maybe aren't able to follow along with the tori kumi on a day-to-day -day basis and then at the end we're gonna have our pr not typical uh basho recap because we it's difficult to talk about oh yeah can you believe how good kiri bayama looked and all the spinning and stuff he was doing uh, well, but we're we could. I mean, we could. We just leave that up to the fans. I was about to say, if we're getting all this interaction, Ryan, we need stories. Let's get some pizzazz in there. Yep, definitely. So we'll talk, we'll recap the Basho as if it happened. We'll talk about who won the special prizes. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to do a Bonske prediction for the Nagoya Basho based on the results of our simulated Basho. Uh, so we're going to try to keep this 
as real as if this tournament was actually happening as possible, just so people have a little bit of something to entertain themselves while sumo is gone. It's not as good as real sumo, but it'll be something fun to do in the meantime, hopefully before the July Basho takes place. I'm excited to see um, this could, based on how well we put together a simulation, it could turn out to be extremely accurate to real life and Hakuho just goes 15 and 0 or it could be extremely inaccurate to real life and the very bottom guy on the Bonske somehow wins the entire thing both are mm-hmm. things that are completely within the realm of what have happened in the last two tournaments so yeah, like, exactly Jake, if that happens this time that would be Koto Yuki what what that what I'm getting at though I guess, <laughs> is that it's very possible that there is no way to know how accurate this is because literally the best guy and the worst guy in the top division have the two titles in this decade. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's whatever. the beautiful thing about our simulator is how strange times currently are. No matter what happens, nobody can argue that our simulator was bad. <laughs> yes. No, that's the beautiful thing about the sport though. Come on, this is this is what I love about it. Yes, so we have to make sure that our simulated calculations are true to life in that everything is random and nothing makes sense. Yeah, so we've we've spent a lot of time so far uh, with effort going into this, uh, and we really hope everybody enjoys that, enjoys it as much as we expect to enjoy it and as much as we have enjoyed putting it together. Like I said, it, it's not a lot, but it's, it's the best that we can offer in these times. Uh, Everybody needs a little bit of something right now to take their minds off of the situation. So hopefully this fake sumo tournament that we're going to present and hopefully have the fans uh, build on some of the storylines of what's going on. Uh, We'll just take everybody's minds a little bit off of it and give them a little something to look forward to every day to see the results of all of our matches. But unless anybody else has any other thoughts, I think we will wrap up this podcast So if you enjoy this podcast, oh, was there somebody with a thought there? I have two shout outs. Uh, The first one is to my personal hero, uh, the man who I aspire to be one day, and that's myself. Um, (laughs) No, but seriously, uh, uh, a friend of ours, we've mentioned uh, a friend of ours podcast on the show before, Semi Sages of the Pages. It's a uh, it's a podcast about writing. Uh, all sorts of different tangentially related things about writing and the the process of being a writer and such. And just recently, they released their episode where they interviewed me. I And I think this may actually be the first time I've told you guys about it, too. They interviewed me about being a dungeon master and what it's like to write for a different type of audience than normal fiction writing. Not only have you told us about this, you told us about this on the podcast before. <laughs> Correct, Mundo. So if you guys haven't heard about this, I would really <laughs> recommend that. <laughs> um, I would really recommend that you go check it out. Their, their podcast is very interesting. I've listened to a lot of different things and learned a lot about something that I never really had interest in before. And our other shout out is for me and Ryan's voice quality and soon to be Max voice quality. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Maya from Zounds.com helped us out with getting some uh, getting some new equipment here. That's Zounds with two Zs. And uh, go check it out if you are also a podcast recording remotely right now and looking to improve your quality. Yes, thank you, Jake. I completely missed that. So once again, thank you to Maya for me sounding a lot better than I have in the past on these remote podcasts. With that being said, If you enjoyed this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Grand Sumo Breakdown. Our blog, where our entire Ghost Basho will be taking place, as well as Twitter and all that, is grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, which we expect for this fantasy basho, but hey, that's part of the fun. Or drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com, or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. So coming up on the podcast, we will have an interview with somebody uh, after this upcoming weekend, so you can look forward to that. Mac, what is coming up on that interview? 
We will be interviewing an amateur sumo wrestler. Some of you might know him, but I'm not going to spoil the surprise. But just know that uh, this gentleman has participated on both the local stage and the national stage. Yes, and then probably the next time you hear us after that, we'll be going in-depth on our Basho simulation. So we will see you then. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.